No! 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 <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the tank review for the American Tier 8 Heavy Tank, the T-77. Now this is a premium tank that you can get by buying the Season Pass and reaching level 100. And it's also a tank that looks exactly the same as the T-57 Heavy. Yes, it really does. It's just a little bit smaller. That's what it feels like anyway. On the whole, it's a pretty decent tank. I've, I've been enjoying playing this tank. But, if you're going to buy it outright, this is if you're going to buy it outright and you're watching this tank review past the flash po Operation Flashpoint season, buy the Sergeant Slaughter instead, because the Sergeant Slaughter is just better than this tank in most ways, and it's just such a better tank. It's really good. I mean, to be fair, it's OP, the Sergeant Slaughter, the T-54 E2. This tank is so much better. But, that's OP. This is definitely good, but it's a bit more balanced. And it's definitely quite nice. I've, I've really enjoyed playing it. It's, it's nice burst damage. You do feel like you're twiddling your thumbs a little bit with the reload, because it's quite bad. But, I suppose that's the balance for having that sort of relay, that sort of damage output for some reason, well, for that reason, I should say. So the stats, 232 APCR pen is really good. That is really good standard pen. That means you can pen a lot of tanks quite easily, pretty easily. You might, you only struggle against a few tier tens with that, which is nice. 299 heat pen is amazing. That's unbelievable heat pen. It's absolutely fantastic. That's Unbelievable. The only problem is it's heat, which means if you get the sides of things like E100s, Type 5s, Mousers, and a lot of other tanks as well, even like Russian mediums and stuff like that, you'll just get absorbed in the spaced armor because that's what happens. But you can pen the front of E100 turrets with this, you can pen Type 5 heavies with this quite easily, and that's one thing that this has over the Sergeant Slaughter, and that is beautiful. 360 damage with three shots for 1080 is that for 1080 output is really, really nice. That means when you drop all three into someone, you feel like you've really hurt their day. And it's fantastic for that. It's satisfying when you drop all three into someone. 1450 hit points is... Yeah, it's quite low actually for a tier 8 heavy. Considering that Tiger 1 at tier 7 has 1500 hit points. Yeah, that's relatively low. But what does the Sergeant Slaughter have? The Sergeant Slaughter has 1500, so it's only 50 less. So, you know, so-so. 48 kilometers an hour. It does reach that very easily. The The top speed, the mobility on this tank is fantastic. That's one of the things I've really enjoyed. The ability to get into aggressive positions to reposition in this heavy tank is really, really good. The reverse speed's terrible, but the, like I say, the ability to get into those aggressive positions is just fantastic. And it really helps this tank out a lot. And I, I really like that about this tank. And it makes it part of, partly why I enjoy it so much. 370 meters view range is poor. That is really poor. It means you really struggle to spot for yourself at times, especially on maps like Proc, where there's lots of foliage and bushes. You get outspotted a lot, and it's kind of annoying. You need to buff this up as much as possible. Vents, optics, situational awareness. You just you need to get this up as high as possible. But even then, it still does struggle with that view range, and it can be a pain compared to the Sergeant Slaughter's 390, which is amazing. Concealment, well, concealment's concealment. You, you don't really need that on a heavy tank. And, yeah. So, stats. 4.09 round a minute rate of fire. Yes, that's really not that good. I got it down to 33 base, 32.6, somewhere around there. You'll see in the replays. I mean, it's, it's pretty decent for saying you put out 1,080, right? But it's, it's pretty slow. It's actually the same as... Near, near enough similar to the Stockade's reload. And the Stockade gets 1,200... Well, 1180 I think it is or 1190 something like that shell capacity 2.7 aim, 2 aim time is pretty slow as well that's a little bit it's a little bit eh, a little bit eh, really with it I mean this has 2.9 aim time but I don't know what it is generally this gun on the sergeant slaughter with 0.39 which is the same as this one and slightly worse aim time just feels better than this tank this tank's gun handling feels terrible it misses a lot of shots and it really does like to derp its shots. It's probably the terrain resistances, I imagine. No, not really. I, I don't get what it is. This this tank just tends to derp shells for me and I, I don't get it. And it can be frustrating when you use this 40... When you've got this 33 second reload fully pimped. 
and you derp two of the three shells, it can be so frustrating and you really feel like you're twiddling your thumbs for the next 33 seconds and you sort of sit there simmering on it and it can be annoying. But, yeah, I mean, like I say, it's kind of the balance of it and that's all right. In terms of the armour, 152mm on the turret, 70 on the side and 50 on the rear, which means, by the way, derp guns like turtles with 86 pen can pen the back of your turret, which is not, is not good, especially when the ammo rack's there. Let's have a look at the armour model. This is the armour model of the 277, and mm, it's one of those tanks that is actually pretty decent on its upper plate when it's facing you, and you can face hook people and ricochet stuff off the upper plate if they're silly enough to shoot this. It's got that sort of look at the way it's angled, it's really weird, right? So this can bounce stuff and it can be alright, it's pretty nice. I've, I've had it before, I've hugged, face hooked people and they've just kept shooting the hull for some reason and kept ricocheting. The lower plate's pretty good as well it's pretty troll as well because just look at the way it's look at all these little divots and stuff sometimes it just ricochets when you're shooting at it if you're shooting at this tank just shoot the turret the turret the cheeks 140 150 look how terrible it is this turret is absolutely garbage it's the biggest weak spot going it's dreadful it's the one thing you're always going to see when it starts shooting at you and it's just easy to pen so shoot in this tank shoot the turret and don't rely on it when you hold down look at this when you're using your full gun depression even then look how bad that turret is you still get penned by everything at your own tier very easily tier 10s wreck it even some tier 7s will pen this very very easily so don't rely on the armor it can side scrape quite reliably because it's got this boat shape like the t57 heavy which is quite nice but yeah, the armour is not exactly something you want to be relying on for this heavy tank. It wants to be that second line support, jumping in, using its burst damage, pulling back and letting other people sort of take the heat. So yeah, we've gone over 30 metres of view range, poor. The traverse speed at 30 is pretty good for the turret. And that with the 30 degrees a second traverse speed on the tracks means your turret will never will always keep up with your tracks, I should say, which is pretty good. 48 kilometers an hour top speed is great. 12 kilometers an hour back is awful. It's awful. You're actually better to, to use the track traverse, spin round and run away for, forwards, than try and reverse back. Honestly, that's that's my tip to you for that. 16.33 horsepower per ton is fantastic. That, that means you get up to your top speed really easily. The mobility on this tank, don't underestimate it. It's really, really good. Okay? But on the whole, yeah, this tank is good, and it's good for those that are getting it for, well, I say for free, by buying the season pass for Operation Flashpoint. But if you're going to buy this in the future when there's no season pass, buy this tank instead. The T54E2 or the Sergeant Slaughter is just so much better than this tank. Because, I mean, it's basically because it's OP. But it's good in its own right, the T77. Don't write it off. It can be fun. And that APCR is nice. So, as always, everybody, I'll take you to the garage where you can see the equipment, the commander setup, all that lovely stuff, and I'll see you there. So, here we are in the garage with the T-77, and look at it. It's a T-57 Heavy. <laughs> it's pretty much what it looks like. In fact, that's exactly what it looks like. Let's have a look at the T-57 Heavy, look. Here's the T-57 Heavy, in all its glory. And here's the T-77. It's just like a less bulky T-57 Heavy. It's weird. But it's a Tier 8. So, you know, there is that. Let's have a look at the skin for this tank, first of all, that you get with... Well, I say you get with it. I think you have to complete a challenge once you unlock the tank. And here it is. Here's the skin. It's got a camo net on it and some camo. And it's got 34, look. So, yeah, I mean, the skin, the skin looks right, I guess. It's a lot better than what we used to get with WWE, Hot Wheels, all that sort of shenanigans, right? It looks all right. Is it worth 3k gold? Mm, I don't think so. No, not, not worth 3k gold. So for those of you that are buying this tank past Operation Flashpoint, if you're watching this video again, just put normal camo on it, like I have now, and pay 1200 gold if you're going to do it, instead of paying 3k gold for this skin. That's what I'd do, personally. Just to save on the gold. So, in terms of equipment, it's pretty standard auto loader equipment setup. And that is vents, vert stabs, and optics. Pretty much, that is what I'd put on it. It's what I put on pretty much every auto loader. And it's definitely the best sort of setup for auto loaders because you can buff the view range 
as much as possible with optics. Vents also helps view range, although it doesn't help it in effective values on the garage. But it also helps the DPM a little bit, helps the gun handling a little bit, helps the aim time a little bit. And as well as that, you want the vert stabs to be able to just have that better accuracy because 0.39 is, is a little bit tragic. So you see with the gun, with the commander stats as well, you get down to 0.28, which is really, really, really quite good. But it does still feel, even with 0.28, it still feels incredibly derpy. I can tell you, I don't know what it is about this tank compared to the Sergeant Slaughter, considering that gun handling is fairly similar, right? This tank's gun handling just feels woeful compared to it, and I just I don't get why. It's, you know, it's one of those things. But, you know, it's a tank that's not bad. I, you know, I quite enjoy it. And to get it for, say, for free, but for paying 2k gold in the season pass, and then you do get the 2k gold back, it's not too bad. In terms of a crew, I'd stick in it. It's pretty standard heavy tank for me, personally. And that is Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Sixth Sense, Trap Mechanic, Fire Fighting, Situational Awareness, Steady Aim, Run and Gun, and Snapshot. Because obviously you want to buff the view, the gun handling as much as possible with these three perks view range view range view range you just you don't want to get out spotted as much as possible so buff it as much as you can track mechanic because it's better than general mechanic for your tracks because you've got usable repair kits now which mean that general mechanic is a lot less useful than track mechanic is and you want to get those tracks up as quick as possible when you do get tracked so you don't get perma tracks basically born leader because 10 percent better everything is good 10% better reload again, better DPM, just it's what you want. Six cents because you want to know when you're spotted. Firefighting could be used or you could use fire prevention. It's up to you. It's whichever one of those two perks that you prefer. I prefer firefighting, which I've listed out quite a few times. But again, that's personal preference, which of the two that you use. If you use a fire extinguisher, you could drop that. And put something like rapid aim on to help to just make the turret speed better, or because it has APCR standard, put iron mace on to make it so that your shell penetration doesn't drop as much over the distance, and that could help quite a lot as well. But yeah, on the whole, this this tank is is pretty interesting, and I th I think it's pretty balanced. It's it's pretty enjoyable tank to use. It's just a little bit annoying when you do derp those shots into the ground and then you sat there with a 33 second reel and you're sitting there going oh plus if you've had the benefit of playing the sergeant slaughter honestly the sergeant slaughter is just so so much better it's just a better tank generally but then again that's because it is OP and there's no other way of stating that so, as always, everybody, I'm going to send you over to the replays, let you watch the footage of the tank to make your mind up on it yourself, because you might watch it and go, that guy's talking a load of crap. I, I don't like what he's saying. That tank looks garbage. Or you might watch it and go, this guy's understating it. This tank looks wicked. I'm going to look. I'm looking forward to this one. So I'll let you make your mind up in the replays. I'll see you there. So here we are with the replays of the T-77. And... We're on Sand River, and we're bottom tier, so we're going to go over here because it's in counter battle, so the guys spawn at A2 and C2 and B2 and all that area over there. So a lot of the fighting tends to happen on these dunes over here. Now obviously with the T77 having good gun depression with 8 degrees, you can make use of this little dune over here to get shots at people as they cross. Unfortunately we didn't get there for the Sand Axe, but we are going to get some shots into this Udes. We get one in, and unfortunately the second one goes high and hits the turret of the Udes. Like I say, this gun does generally feel quite derpy. Like I say, it feels worse than the Sergeant Slaughter gun somehow, some way. Even though technically, technically, it's got better stats. You know, it's got like 2.7 instead of 2.9 aim time. That sort of thing. And... When you've missed that shot and you're sitting with this reload, and this reload feels a long, long time, especially when you miss the shots, you feel like you're twiddling your thumbs for quite a while, and you're just waiting and waiting and waiting to get back in. So right now, I'm itching to get back to get some shots into this guy here, and I'm hoping to get some shots into him. So we've reloaded now, 
And I'm just going to try and poke out and see if we can spot anyone. Because obviously we know that Centurion 7 ones there. But if we can spot anyone, that'd be great. And then we catch this Lerva. We get a snapshot in. I was saying the gun handling is terrible, right? We actually get a really good shot snapped in. And then he does the kind thing of backing up so that we can get another shot in. That's really nice. And obviously, it's just like the Sergeant Slaughter when it's putting that damage out. The ability to absolutely slap that damage out. 1018 a clip within like four seconds of the first shot being fired it is just delightful it means you really do wreck people really quickly and they, they they kind of regret driving out in front of you it's really good for that sort of track they repair track again and then keep it damage going so unfortunately we just reloaded a little bit too slowly to get a shot into the 705 i was poking out a little bit too far then it was a dangerous game and i decided nope pulling back with 60 p TP down here is a possible chance of getting shot at. So we're going to pull up further up the ridge line next to this 277 here to try and get some shots into him. So he's kind of sideways on, so we get one that bounces. Then we finish him off. I mean, 223 APCR pen is really good. So that means it's, you know, pretty nice to be able to pen that guy, even with his angle like that. So... While we're reloading, we're just basically going to sit here because it does feel like a long time. Like, if you consider that 705A, when he came across, we would have been reloaded in time to shoot him with the Sergeant Slaughter because that reloads by about 25 seconds. And he, we only just missed out on hitting him. So here's this, here's this poor Scorpion lot. He's caught out. We just get over the food glitch and we just dump the clip in. The poor guy, he never stood a chance. Never stood a chance. In the blink of an eye, he's dead. Like, that's that's what this autoloader can do and that's what's so nice about it. And that's obviously what's so nice about the Sergeant Slaughter as well. And the T-57 Heavy, for example. Obviously, because this is a tier 8 version of the T-57 Heavy, pretty much. It just puts out that damage so quickly and, you know, people have lost all the health in the blink of an eye. That's the strength of the tank. And obviously you've got you think about tanks like the Barracuda. It's got a similar clip, right? Better reload. Worse gun handling, although gun handling is a boot point kind of when it comes to 6.0. But it's got that worse intra clip, it's like two and a half seconds, which means you're sort of sitting around for a bit longer trying to dump those shells. And like you see a, sh a tank like that King Tiger over there that we just dumped all three shells in, which is delightful. He probably would have got away from the Barracuda. We got one shot. We probably got two shots in. And then he would have got away. But not with this autoloader. And it's very nice. So. We're going to go over here now. To try and see if we can get some shots into the Andre. Because obviously the Andre is marauded into our base. He's going for the artillery. And we want to try and see if we can get shots into him. But he's behind that ridge line. So we're not quite going to get shots at him. It's, it's kind of an awkward one. Because it, we need to go down there if we want to. But then we spot this Progetto and it's like, well, rude not to. He pops out. Pops a shot as Penzers. But, I mean, if we're going to be able to pop two shots into him, it's worthy trade. So, we've got two shots into him. We're up to 3k damage. And it's now thinking about where the next clip of damage is going to go. And, obviously, this is, this is one thing that is good about the tank. And it's just how mobile it is. It's so quick to get to position. I mean... Obviously, I know we're going downhill at the minute, but we're doing 45, 46, 47 Ks very easily. And for a heavy tank, that makes it incredibly mobile. And it just means we can get to where we need to be to put out the more, more, and more and more damage, generally. So we've got this Progetto in front of us. We want to get rid of him, because obviously, if we mess around with him, he could clip us out if he's fully loaded. We get a nice shot into him to finish him off, and there's just two artillery left. And unfortunately... Fortunately for us, both artillery are going to get spotted up in a second. And they're both at A1, B1. And that is a pain in the backside. Because that means we're just not going to get any more damage. But I mean, look, we're shifting it. Like it, It's one of those things that's really surprised me about playing the tank. As long as you don't drive into rocks. Yeah, drive it. I, I, I've, I've told you at the back of the room, don't criticise my driving. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It's amazing, right? Thank you. It's amazing driving. So, yeah, anyway, just look how quick it shifts. We're doing 48, 47. It's a heavy tank. This is a heavy tank, by the way. It's properly quick for a heavy tank. And that is amazing. And that is a really good, good feature about the tank. Like I say, it means you can get to those aggressive positions 
and push really easily. So we finished that game with 3k, 4.1k damage, first class, 1700 base, like 4.5k combined. It, it kind of showed exactly what the tank can do. And like I say, it's one of those things because this tank is definitely one that people will enjoy. It's definitely a decent tank. It's not bad by any stretch. But it's not one that I could ever recommend actually buying outright. So, you know, it comes to deals later on in the year. Operation Flashpoint's gone. Like I've said in the stats in the garage part, you know, Operation Flashpoint's gone. People missed out on this tank and they see it and go, Ooh, a mini tier 57 over tier 8. Should I buy that? If you're watching this review then, no. Wait for the T54E2 to come on sale. Or the Sergeant Slaughter, they're both the same tank. I think the T-54E2, which is the unskinned Sergeant Slaughter, is on sale right now. And that is a tank that is obviously well worth picking up because it's, it's borderline OP. And it, I say borderline, it is OP. And it's one that you definitely want. It's an absolute beast. This tank obviously pales in comparison. Just because the reload is so much worse. But, it, like I say, it, it's harsh to do that to the tank because... You know, it, you can have fun with it in its own right. So this second game, we're on Arctic region. And I'm taking it to this corner up here. And I'm actually going to decide to be aggressive. Because I can't bother with this corner. I can't bother to muck about on this corner here. Poking backwards and forwards. So I'm just going to push up to that ledge over there and be aggressive. Now we've seen the CS-52 lease. And I'm like, okay, that's a tank. I haven't quite yet realised... There's a light tank spotted on my right. And I'm like, detected? What light? Oh, hello. And here comes the derpy gun handling. We auto in one. Miss. Pen. Miss. I don't know how that last one missed. The first one, obviously, I can forgive because I, I basically snap shot at it and it, it missed. But the last one, yeah, I don't know how that one missed. That was the bad gun handling coming into play. And that guy's going to get about. I'm obviously a bit wary of artillery. I've seen that shell looping in. And um, what I want to do is get under this ridge line, under where this bunker is, because that artillery is not going to hit me here, and that's just my safe spot. Um, while this reload is now nearly done, we're going to be able to plow in and hopefully get some shots in. We see this T29 over here, and it's like, right, okay, this guy is having it. There's a little bump in front of me, which is kind of annoying with the gun depression. Unfortunately, we're aiming for his upper plate, don't quite get it. We bounce one, miss the other, and that one actually flies into the top of his turret, which is nice. I think we, we must have overmatched that. Because that is one thing that's good about this tank. And that's one thing that's different about this tank compared to a lot of the others. And that's got the fact that it's got a 120mm gun. The others have all got like 105s. This having a 120mm gun is something that I never I forgot to pick up on in the stats in the garage. It means you can overmatch so many tanks. And it means you will do just so much more to people. Like You're more likely to track people and stuff like that with just the calibre of the gun. Which is definitely a plus point for the tank. That's definitely a bonus. And that's definitely really nice. So the we know there was a CS-52 lease at B8. And I'm kind of thinking, you know what? I want to get up behind this guy and put my clip into him. Because I can clip him out and kill him. And I'm being wary that there's stuff down there that I might be able to hit. This dragon gets spotted and it's like, well, okay. It'd be rude not to put a shot in. And we've only got two shots left. I could reload, but obviously the reload on this tank is really long. So it's kind of like, you know what? We're just going to plow around and we've got two shots to drop into the back of these two tanks that are over here. So we're just going to do that. And this Challenger is firmly in my sights because I can kill him with the final two shots. We get one in and we get two and we finish him off. We pop the food to get the reload boost. Now, I think I know where the artillery is and I think he's over there. So, you know what? While I'm reloading, that CS-52 lease is busy with my medium tanks. And I'm expecting my medium tanks to actually, like, come round and attack him. But they don't. They actually fall back. Which means that this CS-52 lease fully pays attention to me instead, which is really annoying. So I actually get shot in the ass there. So I kind of make a misplay in not being loaded and just pushing across. But we're going to make up for it and bounce one. And then finish him off. Or not even finish him off. We actually low roll so we don't finish him off. But you saw the CS-52 Lisa's armor there. We actually ricocheted off his turret. And then we managed to pen him twice through his upper plate. Now we actually got missed by the artillery. I know where the artillery is now. But I'm, I'm never going to kill it. So, And that's that heat round that he fired at me actually just landed underneath me. Somehow I'd never spotted him in that corner at B0. 
That's just the way it is. Sometimes there's ridge lines there that prevent it. Sometimes, for the most part. So now I'm reloading. I'm just sort of expecting something to appear right down here. But nothing actually comes back. And then we spot the artillery. So it's like, yes, get the one shot in. Finish it off. And then, thankfully, this T-52 isn't paying attention to us. Our better brother. And we finish him off too. Now we've just got to wait for the final clip. And we know that this is going to be the final clip of damage. Because I'm pretty much expecting that once I fire the next clip, we are not getting any more damage out of this game. That T25 slash 2 gets spotted below us. And it's like, I'm just not even going to get a shot at him. And this is this is the, the dreadful part about the reload on this tank. You are sitting twiddling your thumbs. I would have been reloaded by now in the Sergeant Slaughter. And I'd have been firing. But yeah. So we come across this Paladin. We get one into his lower plate. We finish him off. And we're going to look for a shot into the back of this Tiger 2 and we slap it in. And that puts us up to 3.8k damage. Like I say, just like that you can get over a thousand damage. Blink of an eye. And that's what is, is what's pretty nice about this tank. And it's one that you're going to have to be wary of when everyone gets this tank and everyone's running around in it. You don't want to get yolo by one because, well, it's going to hurt and your hit points aren't going to last long. But, yeah. That's a, it's, it's a fun tank. It, I, I found it quite fun. But it's, it's, it's no Sergeant Slaughter. But I keep saying it. It's, it's harsh to compare it to Sergeant Slaughter. Sergeant Slaughter's OP and is incredible. So we finished that game with Ace Tank. Ace Tank. First class, high caliber. 1561 base. Four kills. 3,819 damage. 388 assistance. And it was a decent game for the tank. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. A great success!